Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to share with you one of my homebrew recipes that I've been working on for a couple, maybe almost three years now. And it's a clone or an imitation or a look-alike, whatever you want to call it, of one of my favorite beers out here right now. And it's a beer by Three Floyds in Munster, Indiana called Zombie Dust. And although I live in Illinois next to Indiana, it's next to impossible to get it in Illinois. It's, 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 it's one of those beers that's in such high demand. Uh, it, it's next to impossible to find it in my local area. So I have to drive down to Munster, Indiana, usually, or East Indiana somewhere to, to get it. And even when I get there, sometimes it's not even there. They're, they've run out or whatever, right? So it's, it's, it's uh, because of this up and down of its availability, I've been working on my own version of it right here. See, so it's done. This video is a video on how to make this, and this is probably my fourth or fifth iteration of, of this beer, and I think I'm getting closer to what I think is the ideal uh, beer or a clone of zombie dust, which is uh, which has a lot of citra uh, aroma and flavor, and uh, I think I got it. So if you want to see what I did to get this far, keep watching. I want to focus this video specifically on the recipe and what was unique about it and what I did to get it to taste like zombie dust. I want to focus less on the actual process of the basic brewing process. So if you're newer or new to this uh, home brewing idea and how it's done, go check out uh, a series I had done called the Home Brewing Basics Video Series. It's a playlist on my channel. Go check it out and get up to date on what it's like to brew a beer from scratch. But for now, I'm going to focus on the recipe. Let's take a look at the brew sheet for today. All right, so I, I, I'm making a zombie dust clone today. I've done this recipe a number of times over the past few years, uh, tweak it each time, trying to improve it, although everyone I've made so far was still delicious, so I no, no complaints there. But this is my current incarnation of this. So starting off with the green bill, 11 pounds of pale malt, two row, one pound of Vienna malt, ideally a half pound of caramel malt, but I had a little extra in the bag, so I threw that in at 0.63 pounds half pound of melanoin malt, half pound of Munich malt, and a half pound of carapils, which I had also had a little extra. I just went ahead and threw that in there as well. And, uh, and as far as the hops, the, uh, the dominant or the reason why people like the zombie dust so much is the hop, which is in this case a citra hop. All citra this time. So I'm, I'm doing it as a first word hop. Uh, some additions at 15, five and one minutes left in the boil and a dry hop period. The yeast is a Y yeast, 1968. It's a London ESB yeast, and I made a yeast starter for it, and some variables off to the side here, and let's get started. And there's all the ingredients all crushed up and ready to go. Smash. All right, time to add the greens to the mash tun, along with the water. So I've had my mash tun preheating. I'm gonna drain this. All right, let's fill it up. Straight water at 165.7 degrees down to my left here, and grains are already crushed, so let's combine them. Okay, let's add the grains. Boy, that really uh, filled up my mash tun right to the rim, didn't it? Boy, thanks to that spreadsheet I didn't go over. If I didn't use that spreadsheet, I may have misjudged and overflowed this thing. Good I didn't. So I'm gonna stir it in. Now I could reduce this um, from being close to the brim like this by changing the uh, grist ratio, the water to grain ratio from one and a half quarts per pound of grain to you know down to like one and a quarter. And that would have fixed this as well. But it's, it's, it's doing fine, so. Let's keep going. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and check the temperature. Let's see, 150, 
153.9. I was shooting for 154. <laughs> That's beautiful. Man, I love it when uh, your, your spreadsheet and your calculations and your experience all work together to get you right on the money as to where you want to go. Man, awesome. All right. Let's roll this thing up, cover it up, and let it mash for about an hour, and we'll be back. An hour's gone by, so let's go ahead and... Oh, wow. Mmm. Oh, yeah, that smells really good. Man, I, every time I do this, I always love the smell of this. This is... Oh, man. This, this is really good aroma. Anyway, so mash is over. Let's go ahead and uh, Vorloff and drain and batch sparge this thing. I got two steps here, uh, a draining step right now, and I'm going to refill it up to the top and I'm going to drain it again and collect hopefully close to seven gallons of wort. While the wort is draining into the kettle from my lauder ton or mash ton, lauder ton, I am going to uh, do some first wort hopping in this batch. So I, what I have here is my first edition of hops, whole ounce of citra. And it's going to go in while the kettle fills. And first word hopping uh, seems to take the edge off the bite of the bitterness of the of the uh, hop flavor or um, and the bitterness of the hops when the beer is done. For some reason, there's some chemical reactions that take place that kind of take the edge off some of the sharpness or bitterness of the hops. So first word hopping is uh, a way to get some hop flavor and aroma without ex excessive bitterness and citra being a very high alpha acid hop uh, would definitely be prone to that. All right, we got, well, yep, there we go. Shooting for six and three quarters gallons. I got about 6.8, 6.75, somewhere between six and three quarters and seven gallons. So uh, that's pretty good. All right, let's get this thing to a boil. Now it's at a boil. It's uh, gonna be a 75 minute boil. So, uh, I don't put anything in until the 15 minute mark. It gives me a whole hour to drink a beer, or two or three or four. Now we're down at the 15 minute mark. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my, my uh, immersion chiller to start sanitizing. Also, I'm gonna add a whirl flock tablet and another whole ounce of my citra hops. Okay, let's keep going. Now we're down to the five minute mark. Throw another ounce of my citra in. Now at the one minute mark, dump in the rest of my hops. And let's wait till we end here. Okay, now I'm down to the zero mark. The, the uh, heat's been turned off. I'm ready to chill this thing. I'm gonna use my recirculating wort chiller. If you haven't had a chance to see my recirculating wort chiller video, go check it out when you have the chance. For the fermentation process, I tried something new this time uh, with a new piece of equipment that I got sent to me. It's called the Catalyst Fermentation System by a company called Craft Brew. And they sent it to me for review and I did a review video on that. So go check that out too. But just to let you know, the beer referenced in that fermentation video is the beer used in this video and recipe. It's, it's my zombie dust. So if you want to go take a look at the fermentation part of that, go ahead, go check it out. I'm showing a few highlights here on the screen of, of what that looked like, but I'm not deep diving into that. All right, so from start to finish, from the boil through kegging, all done in that video. So let's move on. All right, everyone, time is here. Let's give this a try. Oh yeah, look at that. That is looking good. Mmm. Look at that. All right. All right, here it is. Let's give it a taste. The citra really comes through in this one. The grapefruit-like flavor and aroma. Yeah. Oh man, and although um, I did use a lot of citra hops in here, it's not overly bitter, because citra being a very high alpha acid hop, and as much as I put in, uh, this should have been bitter, but I think thanks to some first wort hopping, um, it tempered it, and my late additions tempered it too. 
this is really good. Um, you know, this isn't the first time I've uh, made this this beer before. I've made this a, a number of times over the past few years, being that I can't get zombie dust uh, easily where I live. I have to drive a ways to get it usually, and when I drive to get it, sometimes they're out, and it's kind of a pain. So I started brewing this beer all on my own. Uh, I tried to make a clone of it as best I could, and I've tweaked it a few times over the past few years. And uh, I think the uh, trick is uh, later hop additions to reduce the overly bitterness part of the citra hop, but allowing the aroma and flavor to come through, and also later additions. I actually did a, a version of this where I, uh, hold on a minute, oh man, Whew. I did this um, one time where I tried to do a full boil. Um, with a with an ounce of hops just one ounce at uh, 60 minutes. I think it was and it was overly bitter Then I did a version of this where I just added hops in the last uh, I don't know 15 minutes and five minutes and then one minute You know I actually tried to reduce the bitterness and increase the flavor and aroma and that worked okay but uh, this time around I did a full word hopping uh, and it, as well as late additions and I think I hit a good good uh, middle ground here between a good amount of bitterness but not, but not being too much with plenty of aroma and flavor because this is good mm. oh man not to not to say there's there isn't any room for improvement i always try to make things better right that's my nature i, I like to try things and and change them each time to see what, if i can get it better than it was before but i'm happy with this guys and, and girls this is awesome Mm. Success. I am so glad I did this because I was really craving a zombie dust and I don't feel like driving to Munster, Indiana to get it. So again, uh, if you like this video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe. And uh, I'll talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.